Hey guys, welcome to LaRock's Cooking Adventure. I'm your host LaRock and today I'm going to show you guys how to make a simple baked brisket. All right, let's get started. We have a brisket which is kind of it's cut already one time and the, and the nose piece, the cap, is kind of cut as well. We're just going to trim some of this fat off of her. Some people uh, like, like the fat on there. Um, I'm not a real heavy fat content type of person, so I'm just going to trim this down and get rid of it. Get rid of a good portion of it. Now again, this is not like your competition type of a brisket. It's not a smoked brisket. It's not anything special or fancy. It's just a regular Sunday night home cooked dinner type of a brisket. Okay, I'm just going to put this in the oven. I'm going to take some vegetables, your basic mirepoix like onion, celery, and carrots, and uh, bake it kind of similar to a roast. Okay, so you're just going to trim this fat off. Now, guys, be very careful when you're purchasing your meats. This, this piece of brisket is about 13, 14 pounds. Now, typically briskets come between, let's say, 12 pounds and 20 pounds. They're a pretty heavy piece of thick meat. And when you go to get your meat, there are typically three different types of meat to get choices anyway. They're going to be, they're going to range from a select type of meat, which is a bottom grade meat, to a choice meat, to a prime. So your three choices will typically be select, choice, or prime. With prime being the best quality of meat. Choice being the middle grade, and of course, select being the bottom grade. I'm always going to go for a choice or better when it comes to meat. That's just my personal preference. Um, I've been working with meats for a long time, so I pretty much know. Now, you guys don't have to buy the premium of anything. This is all according to your tastes and your budget. You know, not everyone has the budget to have prime meats. Prime meats can be expensive. Like I said, um, this thing is at least 12 pounds. Multiply that out by whatever the vendor's selling price is, and you got a hundred and something dollar piece of meat. Easy. So, you want to do this to your budget and to your taste. And not everyone has the same budget. Not everyone has the same taste. Okay, this is pretty, pretty much... Good to go. I'm going to leave some of the, a little bit of this fat on here. Just a little bit. But once I get to cutting, man, I don't like stopping. But that's just me. Like I said, we're going to cook this something similar to like a roast. We're going to um, put a rub on it. And a rub is just a fancy way to say put your seasoning on it. And there's a couple different ways to do that. You can make it a, a wet rub. Which means it's not dry. And that's the other way, is a dry rub. Alright. Dry would just mean basically just your seasons on the meat. Wet is like your seasons mixed with something like um, some olive oil maybe. And it makes it like a wet rub. Alright, this is pretty good. This is a little bit over good. But we're going to ride out. This piece of meat actually was donated to me. And so instead of just cooking it, slicing it and eating it, I figured I'd show you guys how to do it or how I do it. One way to do it. My way isn't always the best way. You know, some chefs have a whole situation. Now, some people, what you could do with this this, this um, trimming, if you have enough of the meat on there, you could just save it and then grind it up to make some kind of a... Uh, Ground meat, ground beef. Sometimes your ground beef might have uh, brisket in it. Some uh, restaurants actually like having brisket in their ground meat. Okay, let's flip it over and get rid of some of the silver linings on the back. The fat knob I'm going to get rid of here. And I'm just going to take off some of this uh, silver lining in this cap. Cap of fat hair. Okay. Okay, like that. 
Now I messed around and opened this up a little bit early and oxidized out a little bit. Let's just take the knife and get underneath of the silver lining. Just make it disappear. Get that nice juicy red meat. Now, when you guys do your rub, keep in mind, I'm not going to do it that way, but I highly suggest to you that when you, after you create your rub and you put it on your meat, you go ahead and let it sit on that meat overnight, okay? That oven is ready. I have the oven preset at 425, and this puppy's going to bake for about three hours. So we're going to check it in two and a half after we get her in the oven. Like I said, very similar to making a roast. You know, you put your vegetables on the bottom, cut up some vegetables, put them on the bottom, and then um, put your meat right directly on top of it. Maybe add something wet, maybe either water or uh, some type of uh, alcohol or wine or something like that. I might have some, some red wine around here, maybe. If I do, I'll use that versus the water or anything else. I'm doing a bit of a hack job on this. I'm not even going to lie to you guys. Get the rivets. This is a terrible cut. But it is what it is. And I'm just going to make it happen. But also, if this was a, a paid product of mine, of course, I would be doing this due diligence and taking my time and slicing this, cutting this, trimming it. Beautiful. Perfect. Instead of having all these meat hacks. This is something you will get fired for if you're a chef. If you cut meat like this because you're losing too much of the product. This is like amateur rookie chef mistakes. But they got to learn some kind of way. But a restaurant isn't going to want you to be like learning on their money. So just take your time. I'm rushing through it. I'm not serving this or selling this to anyone. I'm just going to bake this and show you guys how to bake it and then I don't know what I'm going to do with it after that. I mean, I'm going to eat it, but it really, I really didn't have a purpose for this. Like I said, it was a donation, so I'm just going to show you guys how to do it. Okay, this is enough of the hacking situation. Just leave this nice piece of fat here. Leave it on there. Okay. Now, I'm going to get into showing you guys what I'm going to use for a rub. Again, a rub is just a fancy way of saying spices. Okay? All right. And she's hacked up enough. She's got her to feelings and cut her all up. But it is what it is. Shout out to all my viewers, all my subscribers. Shout out to the people around the world who are suffering from this virus. I hope you guys will get well. I hope they contain it and come up with a vaccination for it. Of course, we don't want to see people getting sick and dying from anything. Personally, that's me. Because I care for humanity and people. Not everyone does, but I do. And the Rock's Cooking Adventures certainly does. Shout out to my Chinese friends. My prayers and thoughts go out to you and the rest of the people around the world affected with this Corona situation. Alright, see how I can't stop cutting this thing? I said we was good and I'm still cutting. I don't know what it is, but once I get this knife on this meat, I don't want to stop. I'm going to end up with no meat in a minute. Alright, let me stop. Okay. So, boom. Cut up. Fat is gone. Brisket's looking good. Next, next up is to create the rub. And that's what we're going to do now. Alright, what we have here for our rub season is garlic. A little bit of oregano, black pepper, celery seed, 
a little bit of smoked paprika and some kosher salt okay now we're going to use about half a cup of salt now maybe a quarter cup of salt salt is heavy and thick and we're going to do a half a full half of black pepper and then do two to one two to one black pepper to salt Bam, like that. And do maybe a quarter cup of oregano. Like that. Bam. Quarter of garlic. Like that. And some smoked paprika. About another quarter. It's actually a little bit more than a quarter. Smoked paprika gives it that good, rich flavor. Now, this is a dry rub. Um, some of you might want to use bay leaves in there. Let's get this nice and mixed up. Now, to turn this into a wet rub, we would just simply add like some olive oil to this dry season and make it into like of a more of a paste make it into a paste okay so there you have it for the season for the rub all right smells very good okay so moving right along we have some celery which we're just gonna rough chop some carrots, some garlic, and some onion. Now this we're just going to take and put at the bottom of our roasting pan, our shallow pan. We have a two inch deep, full shallow hotel pan. don't need to uh, clean these off or anything like that like I don't need to peel these because it's just we're not gonna eat this it's just gonna um, help with adding flavor inside the meat like that like that you lose all that stuff We have one shallot. Put that in there. Like that. One onion. Okay, and then last but not least, there's some un uh, garlic. So we have the celery, the carrots, the onions, and the garlic. Not the garlic, we need the garlic now. Good. Three. Okay. This is just rough chopped stuff. Like I said, we're not gonna really eat this, but you can make a a, a demi out of it in the end. But that's up to you. That's not really the purpose of this video, but you can use this stuff and turn it into a sauce for your brisket when it's finished, when it's complete.
you know, just take this garlic, put it in there, boom, bang, boom. Okay, let's take a look. That's what we have there. The basic vegetable mirepoix. Like that. And we'll take that big piece of meat, boom, sit it right on top of this. So next what we're going to do is rub that brisket down. We're going to rub her down. It'll make it feel real good. We'll make it feel good, smell good, look good. We're about to put some makeup on this chick. Okay. This good stuff. I'm going to take a little bit and put it in there. Like that. Boom. Okay. Now let's come back with this brisket here. Let me flip her over on the bottom side. You want to go nice and heavy on the earth on the seasons because you want it to create a nice crust when it bakes. So don't spare your uh, seasons when you do this. Just go ahead and put a nice thick coat right on top. Make sure you cover her all up, then pat her in. Now, this is the point where I say you want to spice her, then wrap her up in some plastic wrap, and then sit her in the refrigerator for, at a minimum, six to eight hours, minimum. Now, a professional will probably do it overnight. Give it a good 24-hour marinade with these herbs, these spices. I'm going to flip this lovely lady over. And then coat the other side. Remember, you want to go nice and heavy. This is a thick piece of meat, so you're not really going to overspice her. Don't worry. Mmm. Smells so good already. Mm. Guys, 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 this is going to be awesome. Then pat it in. You get all the sides. And I'm gonna get this fat cap over here. She is fully seasoned and ready to rock and roll. Now, because this is television, I'm just gonna go ahead and keep pushing and keep doing what we do and go ahead and skip the uh eight hours and all those other hours to have it sit and marinate just go ahead and get it right into the oven but like i said when you get here and you put the brisket inside the pan this is when you're going to want to cover it and then let it marinate in your refrigerator for hours okay Don't worry that you over seasoned there. Okay. Looks good, right? Right. Okay. So we have this brisket in our saute in our uh, hotel pan. I'm just gonna add a little bit of this. I don't drink wine, but wifey LaRock does, and I'm gonna steal her stuff. Just add a little bit. Pour a little bit on her. And then the pan. This would be really good to make a sauce with in the end. After all the juices um, melt down. It, the meat renders itself. Like that. Nice. And just a very little bit of water. Just a little bit. Because this meat is going to reduce down and 
all the fat's gonna drain out of her. So now we're done. We cleaned her up. Just gonna cover her with some parchment paper. This is regular old store store purchase uh, paper. Nothing fancy or from the uh, restaurants. And then foil. Now you can also use plastic wrap if you have plastic. Uh, you don't have to go out and buy anything particular if you don't have. So, now one reason why I told you guys you want to put your uh, seasons and herbs on her and then marinate her, cover her up in plastic and sit her in your refrigerator. Plastic wrap, okay? Just like this, except use plastic wrap. And sit her in there for a couple, uh, at least overnight. I would do it overnight, 24 hours. The reason why you want to do that is because you want those herbs to seep into the meat. Alright, so we're going to put her into the oven for two and a half hours at the temperature of 425. She's ready to rock and roll. She's looking good. What we're going to do to finish her off is take her out of this pan and put her on this sheet tray I have over here and just finish her off for another 30 minutes without a cover. See that? See that there? Yes. So we're just gonna throw her back in the oven um, for another 30 minutes. Okay. Now, like I said, you can make a, a jus out of this. I'm gonna set the timer for 30 more minutes. I said I wasn't, but I might as well go ahead and make a sauce out of this. So, let's find us a pot and a strainer. I found a pot. Now, I'm not prepared for this part, but a cook knows how to cook, so we're just going to make it happen. Because I really wasn't going to do anything with this, but I might as well show you guys. Just strain it down like that. Yes, yes, yes. Alright, and then we're just going to reduce this down. Get this on a high heat. Let it boil and reduce down. We want the size to go down. All right, so I'm gonna bring this to a boil. And then we're gonna use this as an au jus for our brisket when it's finished. And before this gets to a rolling boil, I'm gonna strain out some of this fat. Some of this oil in there. See that? I don't want this. We just want the pure content of the au jus, not the oils from the brisket. If you don't have a ladle like this, you can use a spoon to get it out. Be careful not to go too far down when you're scooping out the oil because you don't want to take none of the good stuff out of here. Just want to take this oil, these impurities out. It's already almost at a boil. I'm going to hurry up. This is a good bit of it anyway.
Get all the nasties out of there. That's pretty good. It's a pretty good level. Very little fat in there. We're just gonna boil that down. As you guys can see, this is reduced by two thirds, leaving that much sauce in there. It's nice and thick. Let's see. I'm just gonna add a little bit of butter to it. Just like that. You don't need to add anything else to this. Just a little butter. Lighten it out a little bit. Add a little creamy flavor to it. Reduce the heat all the way low. It doesn't need to reduce anymore. It's nice and rich. Yes, the rock. Yes. And we have about eight minutes left on that brisket in the oven. Sauce quality. Can you see? Now remember, this was the juice from the brisket and the vegetables. Look at that. Nice and rich look. Mmm. Leave that on a low simmer for a few minutes and that sauce is pretty much done. Perfect. Alright guys, our timer is going off for the 30 minutes. Let's take it out, see what it looks like. Oh yeah. Oh yes, 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 yes. Let's put some pot holder here. Let's have a look. Looks good, guys. Looks really, really, really good. Ready to go. Now, there you have it. A brisket in three hours. So, what we're going to do is... I'm going to transfer this onto something else and let it cool for about 20 minutes before I get into slicing it. Meanwhile, I guess I'll present a plate with you guys and maybe make some side dish or something. Alright guys, this brisket has sat for at least 15, maybe 16, 17 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and slice into it. See what she looks like. right here I have a slicer knife which is what this is used for slicing meats like this maybe a carving station or something like that I'm 
Let's have a look. Look at that. Looks good, yeah? Mmm, mmm. So the Rock's Cooking Adventure brisket. Let's see if we can get a look like this. How you guys like that? Looks good, yeah? Yes, it does. Thank you very much. All right. Let's get us a couple slices. Mm, mm, mm. Let's see if we can get a look there. Looks very, very good. Oh my God. Let's see what it tastes like. Mm. Magnifique. Perfect. So, so what we're going to do now is make some sort of a presentation out of this brisket here. Oh my God, it is so good. Let me be the first to tell you. Okay, so we have a plate here. Mm. Cut it nice and thick though. This is for my greedy people. I'll just use three pieces. I have a little bit of steamed broccoli. We'll add some of that to our plate. Just a little bit. And I had a little bit of corn. We'll add some of that. Mm, guys, what do you think? Let's flip this over like this. Let's flip that like that. Let's flip that like that. Shout out to XGLC. How about that? Don't forget that jus that we made. Just put a little bit on her. Guys, this brisket came out lovely. And there you have it. The Rock's Cooking Adventures. Housemade baked brisket. There you go. What do you guys think? Drop me some comments below. Looks beautiful, doesn't it? Yes, it does. If you guys found this video interesting, or you've learned something from it, please give me a subscription, give me that thumbs up, hit the like button, and do not forget to hit the notification bell. Yours truly, LaRock. Signing off for cooking adventures. Ciao.